cities are usually buried in the ground somewhere. And that's where Tom Shaw and his team found traces of a Bronze Age wall. It was on a hill overlooking the cemetery at Babadra, and it was the first sign that they might have come across a town of some kind. And the inescapable question was, had they found either Sodom or Gomorrah? The archaeologists began to dig, and gradually the outlines of a settlement emerged. You see the face of the western wall of the site. That's the foundation of the wall. And you had a mud brick superstructure above that, which would, the wall was much taller than that, as far as we can tell with the mud brick that collapsed. One discovery led to another. This is a good view of the one wall of the sanctuary and the other wall with the entranceway. Which you it wasn't the quite the same as coming across a ready-made lost city, out, yeah. but the hard work you began to pay off. Right here is a open plaza area, and very likely the place where most of the town business was carried on inside of the gates. As the data trickled in, archaeologists realized they had come across something unique. The foundations of a town from the time of Abraham, or even earlier, just where the Bible suggests Sodom was located. And like the cemetery, the town had been deserted suddenly at about the same time. But what exactly had been going on behind those mud brick walls? Was it the usual monotony of Bronze Age life? Or was it something else? Something sinful and corrupt? Had the ancient residents of Babadra engaged in depraved behavior and simply had to be punished? In short, were Babadra and Sodom one and the same? Not surprisingly, opinions differ. Work done in the uh, 1960s and 70s and subsequent years have revealed several sites from the time of Abraham, the early Bronze Age, the largest of them being Babadra. It uh, would seem that that should be identified as the site of Sodom. The sites of um, Babadra and the other sites on the eastern shore of the Dead Sea are fabulous sites, but they're sites mostly of the third millennium, gradually abandoned around 2000 BCE. And I think we would all agree that the population of these sites was Canaanite. And to the writers of the Bible, Canaanite wasn't a term of endearment. Abraham's tribe of nomads likely saw the city-dwelling Canaanites as corrupt and promiscuous, the perfect example of the bad things that can happen when you stop living in a tent. That fits nicely with Sodom's reputation, a place with walls, rooms, secrets. And Lot, one of their own, had evidently forsaken his tent and moved into town. Had he been corrupted too? We uh, have an account of uh, Abraham living uh, near Hebron, down in the southern part of Canaan, and uh, angels coming to visit him with the message that they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham asked God to spare the town if some of its citizens were shown to be good men. The question was, how many good men were needed to avoid God's wrath? Abraham knew his uh, nephew Lot was living there with his family, and so Abraham begins this dialogue for 30 uh, righteous people. Will you still destroy the city? God says, well, find me 20 righteous men in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. So just find me 20, and Abraham says, well, how there 10? It's interesting that you have in the Bible, you know, you have a God who can bargain, whose mind can be changed by a good dealer like Abraham. To count up the good men of Sodom, 
God sent two angels to visit the town. The angels walked through the city and prepared to spend the night on the streets. But when they came to Lot's house, Sodom's only good man took them in. That evening they shared a meal with Lot, his wife, and their two teenage daughters. But Lot's hospitality wasn't shared by the rest of the Sodomites who had something very different in mind for the angels. They wanted Lot to hand them over, apparently so the townspeople could use them for sex. But Lot refused. Sort of. Lot, at some point, he's trying to bargain with the townspeople. What if I give you my two daughters instead of these angels? And uh, the townspeople, you know, no, I want the angels. And, and that, that really becomes, in that cautionary tale, the final straw for God. And it's like, okay, Lot, you and your family, get out of town. This place is toast. The debate about whether the Bible is an accurate historical record has been going on for centuries, and the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is no exception. Yeah, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah happened, sure. How we know it? We hear it from our forefathers. We need to remember that the biblical stories about the Israelites were probably not written down before the 8th or 7th century, centuries after the period in question. I think the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of the plain, these multiple destructions of cities, might be a telescoping of several cities that were destroyed at around the same time. There's no question that the destruction of a city is a memorable event, something that would have been passed down from generation to generation. And throughout history, cities have been destroyed for one reason or another. So their names live on. Troy and Carthage were demolished in a war. So were Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The wrath of nature buried Pompeii under 20 feet of hot ash when Vesuvius erupted. San Francisco was leveled by an earthquake. 